guys, welcome to Taylo Tales. Um, I'm Lina Puna L. Ah, I almost forgot my own name. <laughs> my goodness, must be, must be because of this stress. Ah, uh, got to, got to chill and be cool. Yes, yes. So anyway, um, yeah, uh. Sorry for that. being a bit dark here. I mean, it's already like 6.27 p.m. here. Uh, anyway, let's get this wave. Chapter 9. Let's go. Whoops. 900. Alright. Let's go. Let's see, is it? I have to be. Oh, sorry. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> it should be up for here. Last time I made a mistake, I shouldn't like cover the. 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 character's name. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that last time. I wasn't aware, you know. The shipment of fabric swatches for news blazer came in the mail today. As I stand there holding fabric swatches in my hand, wondering what I should pick for news blazer, I realized I don't have any way of contacting him. So far, I've only run into him by chance, or he came over to my place himself. This time we didn't set another appointment, so I can't really show him this swatches. Well, pain. Now I have to actually go out and find him. I'm pretty sure he will raise a huge sting over selecting a fabric without consulting him. How annoying! I guess I should start looking at the hospital, ask around for him, see if he's there. Maybe I'll get lucky. With that in mind, I get the swatches. Place the call sign at my door and lock up shop. There it is, Clanner Medical Center, the one new seems to work at. The entrance seems a little daunting considering I really have no business at the hospital. Still, I don't need to find the man before he continues to stop my store windows again. I gather my courage and step inside the hospital. It's the first time I've been here and I'm greeted by a white lobby with very tall ceilings. The hospital seems fairly calm. Only a few people seem to be going in and leaving. No sign of a certain man with purple hair. I wonder what position he has at the hospital. Surely he can't be a doctor. I refuse to believe someone as petty and mean as him could never be allowed to be a doctor. Oh. Outwardly, 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 I make my way over to the receptionist who's in the middle of helping someone else. So, I patiently wait in line. When it's my turn, the re receptionist beckons me over. Uh, I have problem pronouncing. Now my we learn together. How may I help you today? Yes, um, I'm looking for Nick Forrester. Is he here by any chance? Maybe they won't even tell me if he's here or not. Or perhaps not even be allowed to but it's worth a shot. Mr. Forrester is currently present but he's busy in a meeting. Would you like for me to leave a message behind? Hearing him will be referred, referred to as Mr. Forrester kind of picks me up. <laughs> it doesn't suit him. Mm, yes, can you tell him just Selena Purana? And that's where I notice it. News voice. I turn my head and see a group of businessmen walking out the elevator among them is new. Actually, never mind, I say, removing myself away from the counter. I find myself quickly taking a seat near the window so that I can inconspic 
inconspicuously look at Neil who's decided to wait in the lobby with the other man and argue about something seem- seemingly important. I'm not sure what's I'm not sure what they are talking about. I can't understand what they are saying from him. He looks more dressed up than normal. His hair seems to be tidier. It almost looks like he's a competent adult who doesn't have this nasty habit of running his phone mouth all the time. I'm in truth and grows up at the same time. The men continue to discuss amongst themselves until one by one they start to leave. With their briefcases in hand, the last one shakes Neil's hand and leaves as well. There is a really smart smile on Neil's face as he fixes his tie. I roll my eyes. He's probably so full of himself for closing some kind of deal right now. Maybe I should leave now before he notices me and starts to brag about it. <laughs> so I stand up from the chair, ready to escape. Oh. Eh, so different. Jocelyn, ah, should I print screen this? Yes, print screen. Because, because you know, <laughs> very rare. Wait. Jocelyn, I cringe too late. I can't sleep off anymore. Well, I came here for a reason, so I guess I better swag it over. Get it over with. Neil, I put on a face when I approach you. Alright. Neil runs a hand through his style hair. He looks less smart now. In fact, he's a bit cheapish. Caught off guard, perhaps. Or perhaps he's remembering our last encounter where I fell on top of him. That event still leaves me feeling a little awkward. <laughs> Do you like spy on my meetings? <laughs> oh my god. That implies you will actually say something worthwhile. That need is my own other thought. He waves his hand at me, dismissing what I said. <laughs> or perhaps you were captivated by my magnificent negotiating techniques and couldn't help but stop and stay <laughs> She still cheerfully nodded at me so like this was the actual was the actual truth <laughs> Wow You shot sendiri ya ni <laughs> Okay I guess the awkward name from before has dis- disappeared entirely because he went right back to the arrogant form <laughs> Damn arrogant. <laughs> what does he want? A cookie? Neil, cross and take you close some kind of important business, Neil. I say in a dull voice. Yup, Neil is definitely not the mature adult I thought he was only minutes ago. Mm. Neil looks at me with a knowing smirk but doesn't reply. That actually kind of gets on my nerves. He won't even tell me what he's so gleeful about. That's just annoying. Ah, whatever. I'm here for your pleasure. I didn't have any way of contacting you, so I came here. Neil stretches out his hand, palm side up. Alright, alright. Ah. Hand over your phone, he commands. I frown at him. Excuse me? He beckons at me with his hand, waiting for me to give him my food. Should I give or not? Don't give! Cannot! I'm not giving you my phone, I say I am him. Suspiciously! No sight. Do you want to be able to contact me? No, no, I don't, but I kind of have to, so I know. <laughs> so there is. Yes. Hmm. Then add me to your contacts. I put out my phone for my purse and it immediately snaps. 
Well, this ancient person I haven't seen in a while. He's referring to my flip cell phone. Oi! Ni, how dare you? You don't don't make fun of me, flip phone. Nah, it's so so sad. Alright, okay. Flip cell phone, ah. So where is it? Ah. Alright, okay. So we ah. I had uh, uh, LG brand, right? See, ah, uh, LG brand. So, yeah, it's cool, you know. Flip phone, huh? Right? I mean, I'm not sure it's still usable or not, but doesn't matter. I so can use for prop later, alright? <laughs> Ah, my first flip phone, LG. Then, 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 uh, then my mom and my bro share money and bought for me. Sec, uh, there. Ah, uh, Nokia. Nokia. I forgot Nokia. What? Seven three nine zero is it? Never. Doesn't matter. So Nokia. Uh, flip phone. It's awesome. Okay. Ah, right. Hmm. Be handsome. I should have gotten a Korean. Never mind. <laughs> Alright. So, so don't call it engine. Of course, okay. It's this is like before the smartphones. If not for them, no smartphone. You know. Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm weak. I'm I'm the now like I'm like. <laughs> Phone says, phone says, it's okay. That's what it. Phone. Don't you, don't you dare, ah, huh? like Neil. You, how dare you? <laughs> My God. Okay, back to the. Ah, uh, yo, come on, lah. I hold it close to my chest and glare at him. Some of us don't get free stuff for our parents, I say back. Exactly. He returns my glare, then starts to reset his phone number, which is quickly not down. I see the number under the coat. His Majesty with a smile. Now you won't have to come and spy, spy on me at my work. He says arrogantly. Who wants to spy you? Like go to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Neil, why? <laughs> like I wanted to spy on him. No, I only wanted your opinion on this man breaks watches. I have got them with me, so hurry up and decide which one you want so I can finish your garments. I open my bag and show him the small sample of swatches I have with me. It's mostly just a lot of different variations of grey. Neil takes it and studies each sample with a pensive look. Now that he's all concentrated and stop during of his mouth, stop running of his mouth, he actually looks re really mature again. I wonder how old, how old Neil is. He seems to be in his mid twenties. I think although when he's in this get up and look at he looks like he's 30. 
I feel myself starting to in to be impressed by his looks, not having seen him this mature before. After a while, Nin notices that I've been staring at him, and he looks up from the swatches. Quickly, I avert my eyes, a bit embarrassed. He caught me staring. Hmm. Is this all you have? My he says with an annoyed half. All of the most expensive dark green fabrics available to me. Yes. Perhaps expensive is only relative to you. This don't feel all that expensive to me. I frown at him. Must he always criticize everything? Well, if it's not your, well, if it's not to your taste, then I try to grab the swatches back from him. Then pulls it out of my reach with a little shake of his head. He then pulls out one of the samples. A shady dark grey with thick, thick texture and holes in front of my face. Mm. This one will do. Surprised that he is actually agreeing on one of the samples leaves me a bit stumped forwards. Uh, I want to. The great! Now I can finish his blazer. He places a hand on his hip and hands me back over the swatches. And it Anything else you needed? He asked. Hey, how are you? <laughs> it's kind of, it kind of flies right out of my mouth, and even he looks surprised at my question. I bit my lips hard and suddenly feel all flustered for voicing my thoughts. I didn't really want to say this out loud. <laughs> Neil composes himself and simply gives a small hug. Regardless whether or not this information is relevant to the creation of a certain garment, I have to ask: Is your memory broken? I simply blink at him, wondering what is going on about my memory. See my confused face. He says, "You really don't remember." Uh, you asked me before when we were kids. He says in a soft voice. All that memory suddenly I remember back when we were kids. I had asked him for his name, and he had said it, which was a year older than me. That means present day me must be twenty four years old. Twenty four. I looked down on his. I looked down with my hands in my lap, red face. Oh, it's all I can say. No, I guess I forgot until now. I'm surprised you still remember though. I don't forget things that are important to me. Neil fixes his tie. My eyes widen in surprise. Is he saying the memories he has of me are important and I important? Uh. That means I won't forget about my watch. Ugh! Of course, it was about the watch. Is that everything you came to see me for? I'm. I am quite busy. Please don't let me. Keep you from going to meetings or whatever he does at the hospital. <sighs> Have a nice day, Jocelyn. See you. For once, an actual, an actual civilized conversation has taken between us. I am almost bothered by it. I finally head home. Head home. Back at the store, I wrap my brain trying to think of what I need to do still to get this blazer finished. It shouldn't take long now. I think I can get it fitted by the end of the week. So I decide to text him. Are you free on Saturday this week? It doesn't take long before I get an answer back. <laughs> He's not just. <laughs> I have plans, but I can squeeze you in. Will you have finished the garment by then? It should be ready by then, so please reserve an hour from your time that day. <coughs> Speaking of reservation, are you going to be busy next month? I'm wondering why Neil would ask me this. Maybe he's scheming something. It will be October next month. I don't have anything planned yet. After that, Nin stops testing me and I'm left to wonder what he meant with that question. Ah, well, it's just Nin. Time to work on this place and get rid of him. <laughs> oh my god. 
Oh, chapter 10. Yay, yay, yay. Alright. How long, ah? Huh? Then when we keep going, then now it's okay. We've got almost 20 minutes left. Then we keep going. Okay. The blazer is all the blazer is all but done now after pulling a new all nighters this week. I have been texting back and forth with Neil. He's an insufferable in text as he is in person and we decided on a date where he can come fit the blazer. I guess the most fun part out of this whole arrangement was when I walked him up with a text of mine asking him to remeasure his arm left at 2 a.m. in the morning. He belittled me as expected, but actually gave me the measurements. Haha, <laughs> the sucker. I didn't really need those measurements. I just wanted to wake him up at an ugly hour so that he could suffer with me. Considering I have been staying up this late for a few days in a row. Misery lost company after all. So here I am anxiously waiting for Neil to drop by after working hours. Finally, I get to be done with this guy. This is so fast. The bell rings. The bell rings and the door opens. Neil walks in, looking quite posh and self-assured. There's always this overconfident aura around him. Ah. Oh. Good evening, he treats me. I nod my head at him. Come with me to the bed. Oh shoot, wrong, wrong word. I nod, he, nod my head at him. Come with me to the bed. I lead him to the sewing room, room so that I can fit and make any small adjustment to the blazer. Neil follows me quietly but I can feel his eyes burns a hole in my back. It's uncomfortable. Speaking of uncomfortable, I wonder if he will react the same way again. Like last time whenever I touched him, jerking away from me as if I'm something disgusting. <laughs> I mentally shake my head. He's a weird one but after today, it should be all over. All be over. I quickly grab the blazer that's prepped and hanging on the wall. Then hand it over to Neil. Excuse me. In in, in a deliberately deliberately slow move, Neil takes it over and inspects it with a hot eye. He slides the fabric through his fingers. Look at the lining and the craftsmanship. And I start to feel pretty nervous about it. To be honest, I am preparing myself for his harsh words and criticism because I know that's exactly what he will say. However, Neil doesn't say a word and he slides his arms into the sleeve and puts the blazer on. He turns to face the mirror and check himself out, twisting his body from side to side to examine every angle. Oh, nice. He looks quite dapper in the blazer. It suits, suits him, but I can already see a few alterations I need to make. He's a bit too, too white at the waist. I know it's me and all, and I shouldn't stay away for a guy like him, but it's against my principles to create sloppy government. Oh, I asked him in place of his reaction. <laughs> New size and closes his eyes for a bit. Hmm. It's nothing, it's not anything remarkable, and it's a bit too wide at my waist. My cheeks are already glowing pink, and I can't help but glare at him. Even though he's right about that last part. What a tangle, man! <laughs> Why do you have that arrogant hmm. person? But it's a possible decision enough to wear just a few small adjustments, and people might actually compliment me for wearing it. I blink at Neil. Was that a compliment? I stare at him in shock. At a loss of words, Neil notices me staring at him and 
PTSD and indignant help. Hmm. Well, are you going to continue to stand there and stare at me or, or are you going to fix your mistakes? He sneers at me. He quickly takes the blazer off and hands it over to me. Quit your whining! I'm doing this for free! I snap at him. I take the blazer and hop on over towards my sewing machine and start to narrow the waistline. It should be a quick adjustment so it doesn't take long before I'm finished. The sound of the sewing machines in the Black Kingdom fills the room and he is tapping his foot on the ground impatiently. Once I'm finished, I hand it over to him and he tries it once more. Neil looks at himself in the mirror. The beat is a lot better now. Hmm. Alright, this is adequate enough, he says. I sigh in the I finish. Neil awkwardly, awkwardly feeds around with the cows of the blazer as if he doesn't know what to say at that moment. But then he finally does speak up. Someone might actually want to try and find out who the tailor is. At least his quality shouldn't put me to shame. <laughs> I look at him weirdly. It's, it's another compliment. I can't tell for sure. It's so outwardly worded. Worded. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, right. Are you so worried about what people might think about you? I ask. He raises an eyebrow at me in the mirror, then shakes his head. I don't waste my time worrying on inconsequential issues like that. Your actions say otherwise though, I say softly with a roll of my eyes. Nin definitely cares about what people think of him. Just look at how much he cares what a blazer should look like. Neil turns around to face me. Oh. No one... No one has the time to be worrying about what the world thinks of them. They only really care about what a select few people have to say. Says me in a low and serious voice. I'm a bit taken back by his response as it sounds mature and well thought of and I hadn't expected that coming out of the mouth of Neil of all people. It actually makes me curious if he had someone in mind when he said that. So I look at him with curious I wonder who those people are. Does Neil even have anyone he cares about? Does that mean you have a select few people whose opinion of you matters? <laughs> Neil's cheeks flush a little bit pink, a little bit with pink, but he turns his back on me to continue inspecting himself in the mirror. He doesn't say anything. As Neil is still checking himself out in the mirror, he speaks up. Um... You know, I'll be at a party next month. People will be wearing the most beautiful costumes from around the world. I'm sure even someone like you could learn something from seeing them. I bite on my lip and frown at him for changing the subject. What is he getting at here? And why are you telling me? Hmm. I figure you will be interested in a masquerade ball. What if you playing dressing up all of the time? Neil shrugs nonchalantly as he finally steps away from the mirror. I make clothes, I don't play. I stress the words, feeling insulted. <laughs> he hand waves what I said. Same, same thing. Then he leans down with his elbow onto my crafting table. <laughs> Are you interested? Wow, you're so near to me. <laughs> Interested in what? I roll my eyes at him. You don't have to act coy. I know even someone like you would love to be invited to a ball, no matter how low of a status they have. <laughs> oh my god, this... Ugh. My nostrils flare up in anger. It's a here, near under no circumstance. I... Am I interested? So, I have got an invitation right here. <laughs> what? Neil completely talks over me and he takes something out of his back pocket. It's a cream colored envelope. He shifts it between his fingers, looking smart, looking smart and full of himself, like always. Hmm. Even you would be grateful to be invited. Invite invited to such a high-profile event. 
you could create your own clothes to ensure of your work. You smiles at himself. Oh. You should be thanking me for even thinking about giving you an invitation. How dare he talk about me like that? I take the envelope out of his hand and slam it on the counter. Oh my god. Uh, dragon. Who says I even want to attend? Don't just go ahead and make a decision for me. <laughs> Nin looks taken aback. But then he shakes his head a little and his arrogant face is back to normal. <laughs> There's a lot of people, celebrities even, who show off their various designer costumes. I think it would be wise to accept this invitation if you want to make a name for yourself as a tailor there. It's an opportunity for you to create some connections. He's got a point. If it's anything like he described, people would be flaunting their costume and perhaps I could make a name for myself and snatch some celebrities as a client. But I don't really want to admit this to me. My pride won't allow it. My eyes are focused on the envelope. I'm conflicted about it. I thought I was going to stop seeing around any longer. But now he's waving his... He's waving this invitation around in my face that could definitely be good for my pistols. I really don't know what to do. And what do you want in return? I can ask. ask. There's got to be a catch. No way would he offer this to me for free. There's a slice one on this slice. <laughs> <laughs> I might give it to you if you beg. He says gleefully. Oh my god. Say nothing. I stare at him, my eyes glazing over as if I'm watching the most boring documentary on earth. Neil doesn't seem to like my reaction. He probably expected something else. Perhaps an excuse to start. Quibbling with me again. Hmm. He helps fine. I am giving this to you for free. No strings attached. Why do I find that difficult to believe? I am suspicious of Neil's motives. <sighs> Are you really going to turn down such a generous gift? If it means he might blackmail me into something again, then yes. Anything he offers to me for free has to be treated as suspicious. Who knows what he's up to? I'm just questioning your motives. Mm. Neil bites down on his sleep, colouring becoming more irritated the longer I keep refusing his invitation. I was simply going to show you what a master tailor's work looks like. My private tailor has already been working on my costume for months now. Ah, so you just want to show out in front of me? I don't want to put it around like a peacock. <laughs> That definitely sounds like you want to put it around like a peacock to me. I cut it off. Oh, oh peacock, huh? Well, there's someone that I used to call that to. I, I know how you felt. Jocelyn, huh? Oh my god. But I do want to give you the opportunity to see other people's work on costumes. I figure it out. Would be right up your alley, L L E L I whatever, and it opens up on your connections. Then finishes ignoring my commentary. I stare at him long and hard. What he's what he's saying sounds decent. In fact, it does sound like a great opportunity for me. The words themselves aren't bad. It's that Neil is saying them that is making me worry. Very of any other ulterior motive. I'm trying to figure out why he would want me be there. Uh, why he want me there other than to rub it in my face that his costume is so much better than mine. Or perhaps he wants to humiliate me in front of hundreds of other people. Because my costume isn't up to par. He probably thinks I can't do it. Yes, that's probably it. He wants to see me feel well. I guess I'll just have to prove him wrong. Fine, I see. Grabbing the envelope again. I'll accept and I'll make the best costume out of them all. <sighs> Great! Neil smiles as he says this. I wasn't expecting him to look so cheerful all of a sudden. All the more reason to be on my toes and wonder what he 
his friend ni Ni doesn't just smile like that He's usually got a scheming face Or an angry face Not a cheerful face That's not part of his emotional vocabulary Then I'll see you there He said Thank you for the blazer and have a good night New leaf still wearing the blazer I made for him Unable to contain my curiosity I open up the envelope Wow, very beautiful. Wait, can you see it? Wait, wait. Uh, yeah. Royal Masquerade Ball. You are invited to the annual Forester's Masquerade Ball. Wear a mask so no one can tell your true identity. Hide well from 8 o'clock till midnight on October 10th. Hmm, nice. October, ah. So, let's see. Oh. There's an address to the venue on the back. Just you wait, Neil. I'll make the best costume yet and wow you. Okay. So that's a uh, oh chapter ten only, alright. Okay. Um. Continue. Wow! <laughs> 1,500! Sure, why not? Let's check the 11. Hmm. And Diana, fashion. Today, Sarah and I are going shopping together. I asked her if she wanted to join me as I was planning to buy... I was planning on buying a new cell phone. It wasn't because our news comment about my phone still having buttons and looking at for like a person. <laughs> Why? Well, maybe a little. Regards, regardlessly, I decided it was, a, it was kind of time to upgrade to a smartphone. Especially since Sarah keeps asking me to download this app so we can chat together I figured she would be the best person to take with me on a phone, phone shopping trip We enter the electronics store and I look around at all the phones that are on display Their price tags are very, uh, pretty brutal Uh, yes Smartphone, you know, so <laughs> brutal, pretty brutal price because it's so pretty and you know. Which one do you have? I asked Sarah. Sarah walks towards one that looks sleek and black. Mm. This, this one, the Imperium. The Imperium 6 beat was still complete enough to fit in my pocket. Imperium 6? Alright. Hmm. I don't know what I should pick. The price tag on Sarah's phone is 699 euro. And I would prefer not to spend so much on a simple phone. You are just like me, Jocelyn. <laughs> Sarah gets distracted by the camera lenses in the next hour and she gleefully hop, hops over to check them out. <laughs> Look at these lenses, I should really upgrade mine. I would like a lower aperture for indoor photography. I pretend to know what Sarah means and nod my head all the while looking at much cheaper cell phone. The cell phone I'm holding is white with uh, 
249 euro price tag and I really do not know what the difference is with the one Sarah has Perhaps you simply pay more for a brand name that could be it Aww. I wish I could go to see Sarah all of a sudden Huh? Go away! I asked looking up and seeing her head pop out over the shelf Sarah walks back to where I am That masquerade party of course Right! After I got that invitation from me, obviously I told Sarah about it and she's been green with envy ever since. Why my invitation is there? Uh? Uh, can I? She says, super serious. The pictures that I could take, I would love to photograph some of those costumes in a ballroom. I'm almost tempted to let Sarah go in my place. She seems way more eager about the idea than I am. Sorry, I'm only going to... Sorry, I'm only going there in the hopes of finding some clients. I say dejectedly. Bill is rich after all, and I'm and I am sure he only mingles with rich people. I don't like to admit to admit it, but he is right when he said it's a big opportunity for me. It could bump up my revenue. Wait. No, says Sarah with a set. I can still dream. Have you decided what to wear yet? I can't even decide on a cell phone, let alone my costume for a masquerade ball. No, but I guess I should be diligent and make something that wows people. I would love to rock to wow him, make him stand there looking speechless at my craftsmanship. I'm sure you will make something beautiful. I have no doubt about that. I give Sarah a smile. She's, she always seems to have my back. Now, can we get back to why I came here in the first place? I still don't know which one to pick. <laughs> Sarah laughs and then continues looking for a cell phone with me. She eventually convinces me to buy the white one I had in my hands before. It has a 5.5 inch screen, a front facing camera and does everything a smartphone should do. It's my first smartphone so Sarah helps me set everything up, downloading the app she thinks I would need and explaining how to use the touch commands. After a while, I think I understand everything well enough and Sarah and I part ways. When I'm home, I fiddle around with, with new, my new phone. Oh, there it goes. Wait, I have to. I cannot see. I have to change back. Yes. I'm entering my old contact information, copying the numbers. And names for my previous phone. I even entered in Neil's number still listing him as His Majesty. <laughs> Pixana. Alright. Kleiner Network. Oh. To test it out, I sent him a brief text on that chat messaging app that Sarah downloaded for me. I'm unsure if Neil has it as, uh, as well, but she assured me that most people own the. Smartphone, no, you can't complain. It's a fossil anymore. <laughs> no, don't call it fossil. It's antique, okay? I smoke at myself. Ni isn't the only one with expensive phone anymore. It's not the most expensive model that, he's, that he probably has, but it's something. <laughs> About five minutes later, it vibrates. And I check. I can only assume this is Jocelyna who doesn't feel the need to introduce herself in her first message to me. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's me. You're so smart for figuring that out. What, what a pet on your back? A simple compliment will suffice. Goodbye. I'm not a <laughs> Have 
he does a reply anymore after that and I am a little bit disappointed. It's a lot more fun to read someone when they reply back to you. I guess I should start working on my costume for the masquerade ball. My dress is well on its way. The patterns have already been cut out. I just need to stitch it all together. I can't wait to I can't wait until Neil sees it. Speaking of Neil, he just entered my boutique. Wow. Speaking of the devil. <laughs> I stand up straight surprised to see him here. Neil? I question him. Um uh, I was just Neil looks around the place. Dropping by to see your progress. You mean my costume? <sighs> Yes, why else would I be here? You came to check out your competition. <laughs> you stick his nose up in the air. <laughs> you cannot compete with my vastly superior tailor. He's a huge name among very famous people. I sigh out loud. Did you come here just to brag? You could have simply done it through text. I point at my cell phone lying on the counter. Neil's, Neil's eyes perk up a little as he sees the device. He walks over to inspect it. Hmm? Is that your new phone? He picks it up from the table without my permission. Hmm, model A5 Pixar nut. That's, that's an outdated model. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, you... My god. My eyes grease over as he letters on regarding some technical info that I don't really care about. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you get the latest version? He asked. Because my pockets are in line with gold. This has I can call and text people. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. I almost forgot. You are quite poor. Oh my god. Wow. My cheeks, my cheeks sting with a blush. Why is he always this hostile? I'm not poor! You couldn't pay to replace my watch though, he points out. Normal people don't just have 6,000 euro to draw at a moment's notice. I walk around the counter to stand in front of him. I don't have the time to listen to your calling me poor. If you are done mocking me, how about you leave? Neil rolls his eyes at me. I didn't come here to point out our differences in well. I came to see your costume. Well, I'm not letting you. I answer childishly. Besides, it's not really here. Hmm. Why don't you send for the pictures with, with snap pitch? He asks. Oh, snap pitch. I heard Sarah talking about that. She wanted me to use it so we could send pictures to each other. I don't quite understand the concept though. I don't have snap pitch, I admit. Oh? Oh, it's a free app though. Anyone can get it. I just don't really know how to install it. I can't figure it out. I say with a frustrated sigh. I take the phone out of Nis hand and turn around, unlocking my phone and looking at the screen. A friend of mine wanted me to get it as well, but this is all very new to me. It's very confusing. Smartphones are a mystery to me and I'm still learning the ropes. It's frustrating to be behind on technology like this. Here, let me. Suddenly, Neil appears behind his head hovering over my shoulder. Instinctively, I freeze up at our proximity to each other. That's way too close. His slender fingers reach out for the phone in my hands. He flicks his index finger across the screen, browsing through it. Oh. We have got to find it in the app shop first. News brief is but a hair away from my ear. Do you always bring down to close me? Oh, that was fierce. Nay, you are a little close. You are a little close. You are too close. Nay, you are a little too close. I muttered all. <coughs> Realizing how close he is to me, Neil backs away with a cough over his eyes. <laughs> Apologies, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable, he admits. I'm a bit surprised at his meek demeanor. He's usually 
quick to bite back at me. Uh. I was just trying to show you how to find the egg you are talking about. You seem to be having trouble with it. Ah, it's my first smartphone, I see. Feeling a little embarrassed at my ineptness. <laughs> Neil flashes me a rare smile as he chuckles lightly. <laughs> Can't believe you are an adult without ever having used a smartphone. Smartphone before. I narrowed my eyes at him. I didn't have a rich memory. I point out. Hmm. Here, just let me do it for you then. I bite down on my lip, staring at him for a couple of seconds. But I hand over my phone. Hmm. Neil's fingers start tapping on the screen. Something he seems quite familiar with. Within a minute, he is done with whatever he's doing and looks back up at me. Ah. Oh. There, you have got Snap Pitch installed. It will import your contacts from your phone and you will have to create a profile. Oh well, that was fast. Thanks, I say feeling a little hesitant. Neil is about to hand over my phone but then his eyes flicker across the screen one last time. He cocks his head to the side. Hmm? Who's his majesty? My eyes watch <laughs> He's reading my context. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, don't read that! I read out and frantically reach for my phone. As I try and take my phone back, I end up bumping it out of Neil's hand and it falls to the floor. Damn it! <laughs> I quickly bend down to grab it from the floor, not realizing Neil has the same idea. Our foreheads painfully bump into each other. Oh. Ah! I yep. And quickly rush to the uh, yeah, and quickly rush to stand up straight. I said I somehow managed to knock into Neil's face again, right against his chin. A sharp pain is striking me through my entire head. I bow away in agony, whimpering and holding my head. It's like I hit it against a boulder. What's new what's Neil's jaw made of? <laughs> When I pry open one of my eyes, I see Neil standing in front of me, completely stupefied. Your, your nose! Your nose! I shrek. He's bleeding! Oh my god! Neil's hand reaches out to his lips where the blood is flowing inching across, then widens his eyes when he realizes he's bleeding from his nose. Ah, oh. oh, my nose! Neil! Starts to panic. What do I do? I never had a nose bleed before. Mostly, he stands there as his face starts to resemble a murder scene. <laughs> Pinch it with your fingers, I say to me, and keep your face down so that it doesn't bleed into your throat. He quickly pinches the bridge of his nose and looks down towards the ground. Give me a second, I'll go grab some tissues for you. I quickly disappear from the booty and head to my workroom to find some paper tissues for him. That's not tissue, is it? Oh. When I get back, Neil is still standing there, pinching his nose, not having moved an inch. It's kind of funny. Here I say as I offer the tissue, clean your face but don't stop pinching your nose. He takes the tissue from me and quickly wipes away the blood from his lips. He's still wearing that shock expression on his face as if he truly doesn't know what to do. He looks frightened. I take the bloody tissue from him and throw it into the trash. Um. How long do I have to pinch? He asks impatiently. About 10 to 15 minutes so don't be in a hurry to let go yet. Neil grows quiet, continuing to hold his nose whilst looking down at the floor. A few minutes pass by as we stand in silence. I can't help but chuckle a little at the situation. Seeing Neil so helpless and frantic in front of me is golden. <laughs> Alright. What are you laughing at? He asks. He sounds so nasally. Sorry, it's just a little funny. Is this really the first time you have... You have had a nose bleed? <laughs> And what of? Is this something common with you? Do you often excrete blood through your 
no thrills. I don't know, no, but everyone I know has gotten at least one when they were kids. I recall the times I had a no sleep before in my life. It's kind of amazing me has managed to live through life without getting a single one. <sighs> he goes, the first time I get one is because of you. He mumbled. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> well, this is your fault, you know. I how It was an accident. It's not like I wanted to knock into you on purpose. <laughs> you sure about that? You love breaking my things after all. After all. As much as I would love to hit you, this time it wasn't intentional. Those who always say, I promise not doing it. Fierce! I mean, Nils got a very punchable face sometimes, but I didn't try to hit him on purpose this time. Nils vis- visibly recoils from me, eyes widened in shock. Huh? What? He guessed at me. Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, I wanted. Hmm. How about you stay away from my face for now on? I know he's wanting and take a step towards you. Nonsense. Let me see how your nose is doing. <laughs> back out, he says in your shrill voice, taking a step backwards. Neil looks really distraught. So I can't help but grin and corner him against my counter. Oi. Not another step, he wants me. Just let me take a look. It's been long enough by now. Don't be a big baby. Mm. No, what if my brain falls out? <laughs> yo, come on lah. <laughs> I laugh. Are you sure you have got any brains left in the first place? <laughs> Neil glares at me. Haha, <laughs> it might be funny to you, but I'm the one breathing. I promise it'll be okay. My hands reach out towards his nose. Neil surprisingly slumps his shoulder in defeat and let me remove the hand on his nose. His arm falls to his side and I let go of his clammy hand. I study his face seeing only a smidge of blood near his nostrils still. But it's not bleeding anymore. Um. How's it look? He asks nervously. Surprising, surprised by Neil's vulnerable look, I can't help but stare at him. His gut is usually up and he's constantly arguing with me. But here he looks fragile and a little scared. You know, I start in a soft voice. My hand stretches out towards his face. Using my thumb, I press it against his upper lip and wipe away the bloodstain. For someone who works at, hosp- at the hospital, you know surprisingly little about medical emergencies. Neil turns his head to the side, then pushes my hand away from his face. <coughs> I'm not a licensed medical practitioner. There's no reason for me to know what to do with a nose beat, he argues quickly. Well, Neil, it seems the breathing has stopped. You can breathe a sigh of relief now that you're... Green has a fallen down. I chuckle at him. Neil's cheeks turn the slightest shade, shade of pink. Oh, how cute. He's getting embarrassed. That's what he gets for calling me poor. <laughs> don't, per- don't patronize me, he barks. He slings away from me and the counter and skips towards the exit. Ah. I'm leaving! I can't help but snort and wave, wave at him. See you at the party. Be sure to take tissues with you. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. Ah, goodbye. <laughs> Neil opens the door and dashes out of my boutique. I'm a little gleeful that I got to tease Neil like that. It feels good to bring him down a notch from his pompous attitude. I can't wait to rub it in his face when he sees my glorious masquerade the rise. Oh god, very tiring. You have an important client waiting for you. Complete it to unlock the next chapter. Oh, right. Important client, huh? so let's see. Uh, oh, right. This the the by data. Me for twenty four. Wow, quite tall. Oh, in turn. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. I see. You right. So. I don't want 
I just oh, okay. So so far, yeah, I have two right now. It's not unlocked. Character so far is mine. Let me see first. So I think I don't know should I go on or how. Maybe I just talk for now. Lah. I thought they're going to be a new gallery or something. It's already like one hour. And also, I already did like 9 to 11. So it's 9, 10, 11, 3 chapters. So, should I go on or? Never mind, I think it's enough for today. Alright, thank you for watching. Then don't ever call the cell phone fossils, okay? <laughs> it's an antique. Uh, cell phone is awesome, fabulous. Mm. It's antique. Uh, I also I love cell phone. Uh, and I mean flip flip cell phone. I mean, oh my god, seriously we don't fabulous. You know you know flip. Yeah. So so alright. Thank you for watching. Okay. I'm Vina Pruna L. Uh, adios.